I'm gonna show you 10 things, and I'm curious how many of you can name them all. Let's have a little fun OBGYN style, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, and today, your quiz show host. I am excited for this week's video because I'm gonna show you some things and I want you to play along and see how many you can identify. And I want you to let me know in the comments. Before I get started, go ahead and subscribe, like, turn on the bell, never miss an upload. Let's get started. Okay, here's the first one. What is this? Do, 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 do. No, I'm not gonna do that every time. If you said clitoris, congratulations, you're right. Now you may think, um, Dr. Jen, I'm a little confused because I thought the clitoris was just this little nub in here. Oh no, she's got so much more to her. There's this entire structure that is running underneath the labia here, which is why for a lot of people and a lot of partners, sensation here, not just the clitoral head itself right there is important. And I've got a lot more content on the clitoris and what you should know about it. Oh, and bonus question, how many nerve fibers are in the clitoris? If you said 10,000, you're correct. That's a lot of opportunities to feel good, my friends. So don't ignore your clitoris or that of your partners. Moving on to number two, what is this? It's got this soft spongy thing, suction. What is, what is this? If you said vacuum, you're correct. And uh, no, I'm not, not talking about a Dyson. As you can see in this TikTok that I made here, this device can be placed on a baby's head to help with delivery. That's right, I said a baby's head. <laughs> so it can be placed and we use suction, which helps to give an extra force while the person is pushing. And we use this sometimes if somebody has been pushing for hours and they're exhausted, or if there's fetal heart rate concerns and the baby needs to get out more quickly than if the person can do it on their own. And you can see here that we have a pressure gauge and we only go up to the green zone. We have lots of safety techniques to make sure we're doing this safely and correctly. All right, we're up to quiz question number three. Can you identify? <laughs> This, it's a little long, da, 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 da. Did you get it? It's a placenta, which is, I think, quite frankly, the body's coolest organ. Now, this is not a real one, like seriously, please. But this is, this would be the side that would be up against the uterus. This is obviously the umbilical cord, which gotta be honest, it's usually not this thick around. And you can't really tell there, but there's two arteries and a vein. There you go. But this is the organ that your body makes when pregnant and it's the way that nutrition gets to baby and wastes get taken away. You can kind of see here, but do you see how it looks like a bunch of tree branches? This is why we call the placenta the tree of life. Those are all blood vessels that are helping to facilitate that exchange between the fetus and the pregnant person. And what I love about it is that you develop this whole thing. Dun, dun, dun. And then after baby comes out, your body's just like, we're good, we're done. And it comes out. It's like, so smart. Okay, before I move on to question number four, if you are enjoying this quiz and you love this kind of content, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an upload, whether it's a game show or a very serious topic. <laughs> okay, before I show you this, don't be scared. Coming in at number five, what the heck is this? Now, if you've watched my TikToks before, you've seen me talking about this fun little friend. This is a uterus, which is kind of big, but this is the size of the uterus right after baby is born. And this is the size of a uterus that is not currently pregnant. So usually it's about the size of your fist. You can see the uterus here. You've got the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, and that's the cervix there. But it goes from this to even bigger than this, the size of a watermelon that is holding a, a baby in there. And then postpartum, it shrinks back down and it takes about six weeks to get back to the pre-pregnant size. <laughs> okay, I think I said that that uterus was number five, but it was actually number four. Whatever. All right, now coming in at the real number five. What is this? Any guesses? Is it a tiny bracelet? No. Is it the letter O for orgasm, right? Get it? Clitoris orgasm? I won't quit my day job. Don't worry. This is a form of birth control called Anovera and I am not sponsored by any of the products I'm mentioning here today. This is a vaginal ring that goes in the vagina, which makes sense, right? So this is a model here, and you can see the uterus here. This is the vaginal canal, this is the opening, and the ring sits there in the vagina. And kind of like the Nuva ring, maybe you have heard of that. This is a ring where you use one for the entire year. It actually works for 13 cycles. 
you place it in the vagina, leave it in for three weeks, remove it during that fourth week and you can have a period, or you just leave it in the entire time and you never have a period. In between, you can take it out, rinse it off. You can take it out for sex and then you gotta make sure you put it back in. Very effective. It's 93% effective with typical use, 99% effective with perfect use. Did you know there was a birth control ring that lasted for an entire year? Now you do. Okay, can you see this? What is, now I feel like an influencer. What is that? <laughs> this little device right there. It's the size of a matchstick. It's a little rod. I see there's a string there, but pretend it's not, pretend it's just that. This is something called a Nexplanon. It is a type of birth control, an implantable rod that goes here in the arm. It is FDA approved for up to three years, but actually probably works up till five. And it is the most effective form of birth control we have. It is 99.9% .9 effective at preventing pregnancy. You can place it in the office during a quick office procedure. You can have it removed anytime. I have a lot of content about Nexplanon that you can see up here in terms of what it is and dealing with side effects. So feel free to check that out. Okay, number seven. And again, don't be alarmed when you see model baby's head here, but what is this thing here? It's going around, that looks like it's opened. What do you think it could be? If you said dilated cervix and labor, you are the winner. So remember when I showed you this uterus model and I talked about this part here being the cervix? The cervix is like, just the little opening of the uterus. That is where period blood comes out. That's what sperm has to swim through to get you pregnant. And that's also what eventually has to dilate and open to let a baby come out. So pretend that this, you know, there would be a big uterus behind it with the rest of the baby. Ah, hello. <laughs> so we as obstetricians and midwives and other people who help manage labor and you know, like labor and delivery nurses, we use our fingers to tell how dilated you are in labor. So I know that for me, if I were to check here, so this is an almost completely dilated cervix, which is would be 10 centimeters, which is what you need to be in order for a baby to be able to, to fit out and fit through. This is what a cervix might feel like. If it's just one centimeter dilated, again, there would be a uterus back here, but we spend our careers getting really good at being able to measure how open or closed or how short or long a cervix is in labor. Number eight, what is this? Any guesses? It could look like this. It could look like this. This is a plastic. Or it could look like this. <laughs> These are, yes, speculum. This is what we use and we place in the vagina if we wanna be able to see inside the vagina or see the cervix. So they would go into the vaginal opening and once opened, you're able to look inside with a light source. If you've had speculum exams before, such as for having an IUD inserted or having a pap smear, did you have a preference of metal over plastic? I can tell you, I always prefer using the metal ones because I find that number one, they're not wasteful. These all go in the landfill. And number two, I find that these slide a bit easier and they're a little easier to adjust and they don't make a loud, noisy, clicky noise, which the part of that that does that came off of here, but I prefer the metal ones. This is called a Nella new spec and it might look totally gnarly to see it open like that. But when you look at the thickness, you can see that the Nella new spec is actually a lot thinner and there are speculums that are bigger than this too. So for people who have used these, they've said that they actually find that these go in a little easier and these little sidewalls here, they don't go all the way like that, but they help you to see a little bit in the vagina. I've used these before and I'm not a huge fan, but I know other people really, really love them. And these are actually not disposable either. You can clean them. Guys that are watching, people that never have to have a, you know, pelvic exam or a speculum exam, how are you feeling right now? How are we doing on the quiz? I hope we're not stressed out. We're almost done. Okay, number nine. What is this? Hmm, what could it be? Is it a hat? No. <laughs> Is it a tiny little bowl for snacks? No, this is a menstrual cup. So this is for periods. This is actually a disposable version, but there are reusable ones, but this gets worn in the vagina, collects period blood, you take it out and you dump it. And as you can see here with my model, the way that it works, I'll show you on the side, is you squeeze it down like that, place it in, and you tuck it in behind the pubic bone. And you can see it's there and it would collect any blood coming out of the uterus. And then when it's time to change it, you would reach in, pull it out, keep it upright and then dump it. And this you would actually throw away. I have a whole video on menstrual cups and menstrual discs right up here that you can check out. Did you know they existed? Now you do. It's definitely not a hat, but it would be a jaunty hat, wouldn't you say? Okay, this is the last one. And after this, you get to get your grades. What? is this. Now pretend there's no hole in it either. This is just a demo model. 
What could it be? It'd be, you know what, like what the British royals wear? Could be like a little, like a little fascinator on Derby Day or something like that. I don't know. And this is not a menstrual cup, which you may think since I just showed you what a period cup looks like. This is actually a diaphragm, which is a physical, non-hormonal barrier method of birth control. This specific one is called the Kaya diaphragm. It must be used with spermicide. So you would put spermicide in this part. You would tuck it like so, inserting it much like the menstrual cup that I showed you. You would feed it forward. This model, there you go, it fits. And it tucks under there. Like I said, you must use it with spermicide. It can be placed a few hours in the vagina before sex, but it needs to be left in for at least six hours after sex and it can be left in place up to 24 hours. <sighs> that was a lot. Now, this is a good form of birth control if you maybe are okay getting pregnant because it's about 83% effective. So it's definitely better than nothing, but it's not the best thing we have out there. But if you can't have hormones or if this is the only thing you have access to, it's better than nothing. And then you would take it out like that. There are other kinds of diaphragms out there that are different sizes and you get fitted for it in the doctor's office, but this is a one size fits all. But stupidly it is by prescription only. So I will include in the show notes to show you how you can get a prescription for this without actually going to the doctor. Drives me nuts, don't get me started. I feel like a cute, like, like an Easter cap or something. I don't know. Okay, how did you do? Let me know how many you got right. And maybe I'm even more interested in, what were your wrong answers? What did you say? And anything else that you might wanna ask or know about any of these products and things that I showed you, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section. And remember, you can find me every day doing ridiculous things like this on my Instagram and my TikTok at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln. So until next week in our next video, stay safe, have fun, and uh, you know, see what we can come up with next time. Bye-bye.